Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Junkyard Digs. I'm here with my buddy Wyatt again, and a last minute impromptu revival. What we have here is a 79 F-150 4x4 with a 460 that caught on fire. That's about all we know. So this truck was actually given to us for free from uh, Jed, my buddy who runs Central Iowa Diesel Performance. If you guys are in the area and you need anything done with your diesel trucks, go check him out. He's got a great shop here in Ames. He's an awesome dude to work with and he'll make sure whatever you're doing is done right. Straight off the bat, things are good. I'm not allowed inside, I guess. It's a burnt turd. Appropriately named. Ooh. I'm curious, was this before or after the fire? Well, is there going to be another one? Oh yeah, this, maybe this is just a regular occurrence with this thing as it keeps catching on fire. So this is actually a dual tank truck, so we got to figure out how the hell all that works. It's rusty as heck. 4x4, four four, like I said, so it's been through a lot of Iowa winters. The dash pad is immaculate, and the gauges look pretty decent. Other than that, it needs one of everything. Oh, it's a beer cap. Cool. I can't get it. Do you know you can put beer caps right here, like perfectly over the lights? Oh, switch. I got it. Did you? Oh, yeah, watch this. Oh, it's a Pepsi. Oh, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> There's a 300 inline six in the back of this that was supposedly blown up that comes with along with some tires. So, uh, yeah, for the price we're paying, it's well worth that. It's got a toolbox, sliding back window. It was an air conditioned truck, I think the pump's gone. Oh, dude, does the tailgate work? I cannot believe that actually works. No. Ah, and there it is, it fell off. <laughs> uh, now it fell off totally because I fell over and grabbed it. Ah, oh, shit! God, it's getting wet. <laughs> I should have never opened this. I do. All right, there's that. Okay, here you go. You're in. There's that. Oh no, the mount's gonna fall off. Okay. Yeah, a little bit this way. Oh, oh, God. Oh. Oh. oh, hang on. Okay, never touch that again. Got it. What did you get yourself into? I don't know. Oh, dude. <laughs> May leave skid marks. Nice. Pretty much every panel has been hit or rusted out. Yeah, that one isn't uh, poppy and bangy. Yeah, this door actually opens. Oh. Yep, nope. Wow, they don't go up or down. What is that? <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> oh. This is already going to be annoying, I can tell, trying to work around this thing. But under here, we have... 460. Uh, this looks to be a car motor because those headers are car headers. And I bet if we look underneath, the oil plug is on the side of the pan and not the back or center. Yeah, sure enough, it's on the side of the pan. Looks like we got a Dana 44 in the front. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, if you know anything about anything, there's not supposed to be blocks of steel in your spring. We uh, got a custom automobile in front of us. <laughs> I'm sure that was to maybe help with the with the snow plow on the front, the extra weight. What do they got on this side? There's two blocks and an extra spring. Well, there's blocks on that side too. Look at the spring. <laughs> Someone just like cobbled another spring into there. That's it's like awesome. And, it's like a mommy and daddy spring. <laughs> <laughs> like father, like son spring. Is this a 7.3 IDI starter motor? If it is, this will run forever. I wonder if this works. It hasn't, it hasn't moved in forever because the ram's all rusty. We need to figure out if the truck works. Kevin. Oh yeah, that's true. Focus, Kevin. Jeez. Well, we got a battery, we got some gas, we got tools, and we got a little bit of knowledge. Let's uh... Put that all to use. 
hope our wires reach. They do. Okay, so guess is on when it catches on fire. Is it going to be right away when I hook these up, when we try to run it? <laughs> I'm going to watch for the magic smoke. When does the burnt turd burn? Okay, I know sparkies. Yeah. yeah, no load here. Oh, there's two solenoids. One must be for the... Um, yeah, one probably for the, uh, the thingy. Yeah, the plow. Yeah. Words. Let's uh, pop this beautiful, crusty, burnt air filter off. Let's see what's going on underneath. I bet there's not a filter in it. If there is, it's probably melted beyond belief. The story was this guy um, came out to start this up one day and let it warm up to move it. And he let it warm up and he was inside the house and he looked out and there was smoke rolling out. It came out and it was on fire. Oh wow, it, oh. Was, it was really on fire. Oh, that is... Uh, That's that weird Ford four barrel. Oh, those are the... Uh, I think it's one of those in my Jeep. Those are 4150, aren't they? Something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Motorcraft. D4VE, yeah. Five bucks says the accelerator pump is minty. Up. I'm trying to get the powdered rust dust out of it from falling in. Do you think it... uh? Do you think it still works? Only one way to find out. Look at all this, though. My lord. That is, uh... This is the wiring harness. So this is all the starting mechanisms. So... And charging circuit, and... Yeah. Pretty much moral of the story, I think, is I get in the truck and I hit the key and nothing happens. Do you want someone to hit the key so someone can watch? So we can turn the key off or pull the terminal yeah, off the battery? Yeah, probably a good call. If you want to turn the key on, I'll unplug the battery right away. <laughs> All right. And contact. Oh, shit. Oh, the fuel pump. No, the, is that the fan? I, I don't see the fuel pump. Fuel pump runs? Is there anything coming out of the hole to the car because something's stuck? Uh, turn it off. Off? I hear fuel squirting. I don't see anything. Oh, maybe I do. Oh, yeah, it's right there coming out of the filter. Oh, dude, I think I might have known what caught this on fire. Yep, I can see it from here. It's coming out of the filter? Yep, just kind of burbling as the inline filter. Right here. Key is on. I don't know if you can see that. Hot garbage. I think I might know why this caught on fire. Depending on how long that electric fuel pump was on there, um, the mechanical fuel pump is still hooked up and the hose is just sitting there open. I bet, if I had a guess, the electric fuel pump runs to one tank and it was like never like set up to run both tanks but the mechanical still runs off both or can pull from a different one. Mm. And it was sitting there running one day and just started pumping again. That's a high. And then caught on fire. Highly possible scenario. That or it was just wiring because everything right here is where the fire was. Should we tap the key? Like to crank? So I mean, we could try it. We don't even know if it's stuck. We have it. Give me one second to take it. Tried anything. I can't be gentle with this thing. That is violent. This is a man's truck. <laughs> Ready, Kevin? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. I don't like that. The starter is uh, quite displeased with life at the moment. That of the flywheel has no teeth left. Both of these are quite the possibilities. It, it does turn the motor. Mm, that is true. It's just like... <laughs> really angrily. Bendix is probably sticky, or like you said, Does this thing work. You are really determined to figure out. I just like one. weird hydraulic things on trucks that don't make trouble because I don't ever get a hammer. Uh, wow. I'm going to step back though. Right, for when it explodes. Oh, nothing. Oh. You got one way. It doesn't move. Oh, there's a big old hornet's nest here. Oh, that's good. You got any pliers so I can pull that bad boy out? I can get you one. It's right there. Jeez. Yes, let's go get some tools, I guess, that's, and dig into this. It's spicy. Like I said, this was a really impromptu revival. We were just out here picking up a car when I got the text. And the only tools I have with me is this Tang Tools portable toolbox, which is pretty damn nice. Not gonna lie. It should be more than enough to get this truck running. Would you want the pliers? Yeah. Those needles are looking mighty fine. You are, sir. Uh, it doesn't get any better the soft red pole. Well, that one means business. That's a that's a mighty hefty uh, wasp nest there, guys. I mean, 
There's some in there still. They're kind of dead, but we don't worry about them. Your uh, filter lid is Ooh. melted to... Wow. Oh. Hey, the filter's still no, filter. no, it's is not. It it's, it's it, it melted. The paper's still there, though. Yeah. yeah. There's your PCV filter and a lot of mouse turds and sadness. With the luxurious and pristine wiring that this truck has, we are finding a few things that might not be so happy. If you look down in here, you'll see a GM single wire alternator. Following this thing up all the way to here on the battery side of your starter solenoid, that is awesome. The only reason we notice that at a glance is our voltage regulator for what would have been a Ford style alternator is unplugged. And actually I don't know where the pigtail for it went. So it's gone. Kevin has got some things over there he is finding that are just so amazing. So we were going to hotwire this truck to uh, avoid catching on fire, like I said earlier, but I just realized when Wyatt turned the key earlier, it started running the pump, and the pump is spliced into the positive wire for the coil, spliced. It's wrapped around it. So that means we have ignition power, at least when not cranking. So if there's a ballast resistor in line on these, I'm not sure. I think, I think something changed in 78, 79, I'm not sure. I have ran into issues before where I tried to hot wire them like normal, and then they tried cranking the motor, so. As far as this goes, we have power here, so if this isn't corroded to hell, which it probably is. Definitely is. Oh my god, okay, well. We'll clean these posts up. <laughs> we'll just do this a bunch right here. That's the appropriate way to fix it in a technical term. There, okay, that's checked. Uh, yeah, we can see if this thing will like actually crank, figure out what's going on there, and then hit it with some flammable stuff and see if it makes noise. I like we probably need to stuff. pop this off and check the bottom of that as well. Everything's super corrodian here after the fire. Wow, that's not the greatest looking, but a lot better than I figured it'd be. Yeah, we can scrape these off with a screwdriver and then we should potentially have spark. Looking in through the access cover down here, because we have a terrible noise while cranking, I can see that we have like no teeth. Trailer park, anyone? <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to rotate the engine slightly, get the flywheel in a little bit better place, flex plate, into a little bit better place, so that way we can hopefully get the starter to engage and probably crank this old girl up. little information on four-stroke engines. Um, when you shut them off, they typically stop in one of four positions, and this is predominantly only on multiple cylinder engines, so your lawnmower probably not so much. I'm kind of speaking out my behind here. I was always told it's going to stop in one or four positions, but I believe you have at least two spots on compression stroke and one spot on exhaust. I don't, or two spots on exhaust. I couldn't tell you to be exact, but there's also four mated pairs in a V8 engine. So you've got two cylinders that are going up at the same time, two cylinders are going up at the same time, two cylinders are going to go up at the same time, and two cylinders are going to go up at the same time obviously giving you four compression strokes at once or not at once but four possible compression strokes in a position looks like we got a um, high low range 4x4 transfer case in here i think this is a 205 because it has hubs up front um i don't think these are actually worn i think these are factory ford hubs potentially i don't see any names on them so this is supposedly according to this a part-time four-wheel drive system or it's a full-time four-wheel drive that's been converted over because these trucks did come in both variants. If you're not familiar with the terms part-time and full-time four-wheel drive, I'm going to give you a quick rundown here because they are a little confusing. It took myself a little while to get my head around it. The best way to remember which system's which is pretty much in the name, but backwards of what you think. Part-time four-wheel drive can only be used part of the time. Full-time four-wheel drive you can use for the full time. You use it on any surface. Part-time four-wheel drive does not have a differential in the transfer case. The front and rear axles will turn at the same speed. So if you're on a hard surface, you risk damaging the axles, transfer case, hubs, any of that, because it will cause binding front to rear. In a full-time four-wheel drive system, 
you will have a differential in the transfer case that will allow the rear or front axle to rotate at different speeds so you can drive on hard surfaces. Full-time four-wheel drive systems were pretty common in the late 70s, early 80s. You saw a lot of trucks that just, they don't have a hub, they just have a plate here. Full-time four-wheel drive systems do not have a two-wheel drive option. They are either four high or four low, I believe. Some of them also have a four high lock, which locks the differential in the transfer case so that you can turn them all at the same speed, front and rear, if you're having one axle slip and the other one still has traction, so you can lock everything in. Part-time four-wheel drive systems will have hubs and they will have two high, four high, four low. So most vehicles today are all part-time. Back in the 70s, Jeep came out with a system called the Quadra Track, the original Quadra Track. It was, it was just full-time. It was the same thing as the NP203s, I believe, but there was the Borg Warner Quadra Track case. So there's a little bit of info on four-wheel drive systems. Not something we talk about a lot here. So Wyatt's down there with a, I believe, probably 1516 socket on the crank, giving this thing the old strong arm so we can get the teeth in a better position on the flywheel. All of your old carbureted Ford engines are a 1516 nut, fun fact. On the crank, if you need to go crank that, grab your 1516, a ratchet, a variation of extensions, and head on out to the field. I like you. Alright, let me go down there and watch it. Hold up. Do that again. <laughs> the starter's bad. Is it? Yeah, the actual gear is engaging into the flex plate, but it's just spinning the shaft behind the gear. I think the gear is stripped. That's probably going to need a starter. <laughs> it's literally coming out and engaging with the flywheel and just... <laughs> Just sitting there while the gear doesn't spin? Yeah, it's just spinning while the gear is like, nope, I don't want to. Alright, well, let's put, rip that off, I guess. Should have had an IDI starter on it. Dang it. No shit. <laughs> Could have just drove it home cranking it. He did a view or where he <laughs> threw a reman for it. A starter. It was, all peeling off. it was peeling off. That's the shit I don't want. <laughs> right. They don't do that. Anymore. So what I'm wondering what happened here is I can, it resists me here, like it, in the cages turns one away like it should. But I'm wondering if when our Bendix comes out, the back half of the teeth or whatever grabs it's sheared off. So that's why we still have rotation and grinding noise and it turns a little bit. But the front half, where it needs to be, is gone. Do -do -do. What did you do, Kevin? I didn't Ooh, this is a bad starter. <laughs> yeah, that's a... Oh. No, oh, oh, there's a... Yeah, yeah. Give me 10 seconds. I will be right back. Yeah, my back's dead. <laughs> well, it spins. I was say it spins, but... Is I, it hold it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's going to tell us anything. I'll shove a screwdriver in it when it comes out. That's a terrible idea, Yeah, Kevin. we're not doing that. <laughs> And you watched it come out and engage the flywheel and just like stop. Yeah. But the motor shaft still spun. Yep. I've never seen a failure like that before. Neither have I. Okay, that's a February of 16th reman. That's a, that's warrantable, right? I don't know, is it? Probably not. But probably not. We're gonna buy it. <laughs> Here's the hoping. I don't know if I want to put another Napa starter in. We can go to O'Reilly's. You know the best starters I've ever found that I've never had a problem with? One out of one has been great. Rock Auto has these pure energy starters and alternators. $18 gets you a new starter and, well not and, but or alternator. They're both like 18 bucks. And we ran one on all of Power Tour last year and to this day it's like perfect. And then we had to run the alternator on someone else's car where their O'Reilly's alternator failed. And this $18 Chinese alternator and starter did flawless. See that intrigues me because I am a man of many cultures. And that makes me thrifty. <laughs> and I like to be thrifty. Well, Kevin, I don't like your starter. And I don't think it likes you. I don't either. I think there's uh, one of those laying on my floor at the shop if, uh, if Mook hasn't put the starter in her truck yet. She's not home yet, so we could probably get this done before she's back. Don't tell her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at this point, we're going to go grab a starter. Wyatt needs to head back to South Iowa, go back to work and all those fun things. So 
Thank you very much, sir, for all the genuine help you've given and all the awesome tech you've dropped in these guys during this week. Well, thanks for having me, man. It was probably one of my better guest experiences on the show because just once in a while you get those people that you mesh with and you guys can just work and get stuff done. And that was, I always love when that happens. With that being said, get the hell out of here. Oh, you lost your toes. So we got a starter and we got a Luke. Ladies and gentlemen, Thunderhead 289, here on the scene. I'm trying to give him this truck, but he's determined to see how well it runs before he says yes or no. It's pretty ugly. <laughs> it's, it's really, really ugly and really torched. Well, so are we, so. Fair. I mean, it's fitting. Do you know why there's no coolant in it? Uh, ow! <laughs> what the hell? Oh, my face! <laughs> I really couldn't help myself. <laughs> yeah, I don't so, think there's any coolant in it because it's all on me. Okay, because I was curious because there isn't any in it. That's usually never a good sign. So we're putting water in so, you know, because so we'll forget and then officially crack the block. Okay. Can someone hand me a 3-inch wrench? Yeah, I almost hold on. This is a pretty big old radiator, dude. Are you spilling all that? Uh, a little. Yeah, that's the biggest radiator I've ever seen in a Ford oh, truck. Oh, you know, I thought this was a lumbering pile of crap, but now that I see that it has a flex fan on it, I officially love it. Oh my god. It's my favorite. <laughs> and it's the good one. It's not the one that everyone's like, oh, they fly apart and break. No, this is the one that's stainless steel, not the, the one eBay aluminum one that like 3% of people use. It's the one that, you know, as long as you don't spend above 6500 it'll be just fine. I forgot what you needed. 3 8 wrench. If you're driving down the road, you want to miss a pole, but you have to just slide right by it. You can just be like, boop, up, oh, right, right on through. What the hell? Four-wheel drive bullshit. What is happening right now? It's moving the body, but not turning the wheels. I, okay, I've never seen this before. What is actually happening? Don't ask me. I'm two-wheel drive, five-speed swap guy. Oh, yeah, there she is. How is it possible? That's pretty epic. I can't actually turn the wheel. It's this guy right here. And that one over there. They're both doing it pretty rough. So you say it's, it's these bar ends right here? Oh, there's just the bushings rotted out of it. Let's see. Oh, wow. This one's like really gone gone. That one probably just needs tightened. I mean, you probably couldn't get away with it. I this guess. one's still tight. Oh, well, no, it was a bit. But that one's obliterated. Look at that spring. <laughs> Unique four-wheel drive stuff. Ford. The variable distributor <laughs> cap. <laughs> Here, let me retard my timing. <laughs> Hold it wide open. Oh, that's the bad spot on the flywheel. That's what that is. I don't think we have ignition. I don't think so either. All right, so you heard it crank. Obviously it didn't even try and fire. So considering we have that mess, we're just gonna see if we have some form of ignition really quick. Basically I'm just hooked into the coil here. And so if the magnetic pickup is working like it should, um, you know, we should see something happen between our um, screwdriver here and our post. Wanna give her a rip? Like it sparked at first, didn't it? You want to go again, really quick? All right. Yeah, that's good. It's sparking. So. Yeah, it's right there. Yep. So that means that everything before the cap and rotor is good. Is good. So, so it's, in it's the just cap a, and rotor or the wires or the just, plugs. Right. It's just a question: Is it too corroded to work? When did we flood it out earlier? I should only run the pump. Who knows? It just seems awful corrody. I think that's it. Well, I'm gonna try and scrape it off, but I mean, everything inside is at least working electrically. So that's the only thing in between this and the spark plug. So I'm gonna clean this up and then we'll pull a plug and do the same thing with a plug and see if it, and then if it's sparking there, we know it's good. And maybe the ignition is way out. Like who knows if it burned and then someone messed with it. Oh, that's true. Basically, we need to start at ground zero. I think this will take two seconds, right? Yes. Join us in four hours when this runs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I dropped it in the poop. <laughs> and the poop's holding on. Let go, poop. Here we go. There's poop everywhere. Hey, question. Hang on. Before you do anything, I just realized that's not the bottle of brake clean I brought. Is that the non-flammable brake clean over there? <laughs> I know it exists. Is it? <laughs> I wonder why it wouldn't start. <laughs> Who buys that? Who even why owns non-flammable brake clean? Here. Let's try that. Yep. Hey, that works way better. <laughs> All right, let me let me try. There's poop everywhere on everything. I got poop in my eyes. <laughs> are uh, are mice flammable? Maybe we can just. There's a ton of them. Or poop. Mice poop. Are, are poop flammable? <laughs> Where does the poop go? Listen, you. Oh. Hey! Ah. <laughs> There's a hole in the windshield. Why you no worky? Did you ask it nicely? Well, we also don't know if this is actually pumping anything. Hand me that screwdriver. Oh, yeah, mate. Let's give you a rip. I need a better one. I know. That one will not do it. Why don't you hand me that one right there? Because it's a... <laughs> no! <laughs> It's a what? A Phillips? Like this one? No! <laughs> Easy, buddy. Here, I'll put this back for you. The caffeine you kicked in. Scrape your, scrape your rotor. Jesus. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm gonna go with no. You know, big surprise, it doesn't work. Oh, maybe that's because they're pulling instead of pushing with a pump. Yeah, this is, basically these are cheapo rotary vein pumps and any electric pump is designed to be gravity fed because it has no suction properties it has pushing properties unless it's a diaphragm pump which is just what mechanical pumps are so it probably is dead in other terms if you have an electric pump you have to put it back by the tank and low maybe two feet out and below the tank right. then and it will work hopefully it's still a little tanky yeah. Well, I brought a can full of gas, so we're going to bleed our fuel lines so that we know there's no air trying to air lock the line, I guess. There it is. Good. Mmm, it's diesel. Is that diesel in there? Yeah, there's a little bit in the bottom still from the mm. tow truck. That's fine. It'll help lube the cylinders. Just slather a little on your pancakes. It's all good. <laughs> It's probably going to be mostly diesel at first, actually. That's what it seemed like. I was like, that was that was slickery like diesel. Yeah, the pump was probably full of diesel. Yeah, it's, it's oh short. no, Morty, I Crank feel it, it with diesel. <laughs> oh, that's actually a quote. <laughs> yeah. All right, mate. Are you ready for this? Oh, yeah, let's watch it geyser out of the top of the thing. Activate geyser. I see fumes. Live! Oh, the fumes have lessened. How messed up can a Ford be but it's and still, still run? Yeah, it's, yeah, like, it's, look at this. It's on fire, <laughs> and the horn and everything I've touched so far still works. You had that one truck that was underwater. Yeah, underwater. And the engine like, ran. It was like, do we do and it was fine. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, yeah, no accelerator pump. It doesn't sound like all eight yet, but whatever. I don't see fumes, so it must have taken gas. I am just amazed. I was like, no way. The it was needle, on fire. And the, I was needle, just the needle and seat won't work, you know. Uh, I, I already cheated, sorry. Oh, that's kind of idle.
try and just hold it some RPM. It's just a factory carburetor. It's lean without the choke on. The choke is fried, so I just cranked it open. On fire again. <laughs> from oh, the burnt turd strikes again. On fire from an unknown location. Oh, a mystery fire. This is my favorite. Is it actually? <laughs> no, it was uh, just smoking really bad from down on this side. I see it. I don't know if we have all eight cylinders at the moment. Did you, you scratched all the cap off, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a little, uh, it's a little shaky when it rubs. Well, let's make sure all eight spark plug wires are here, not eating. I know off. that's what I was looking at first. Yeah, mine. I just, I didn't even look too hard. I didn't even expect it to do what it just did. So yeah, nevertheless, with that, I know. Um, like, look at that corroded, hot garbage. I've learned that the more smack I talk about something, the better usually the better it will run. So yep. if I just, if I just absolutely do not believe, then it will do its best to prove me wrong. Do you think the EGR is just? Totally oh yeah, because um, that we, kind of incinerated, and that'd be a huge vacuum leak. I think we have uh, probably vacuum lines melted off the back. That's I, I think yeah. I even saw it earlier, and then I forgot about it. Yeah, like this one that is melted into something. That's the PCV. Let me uh, let me go get some vacuum caps. How about yeah. that? Yep. So I mean, that's, that's a good idle. that's a good start. Watch it idle and run by. So, like I was saying, you know, we, I didn't even look too close at this stuff because I did not think that that carburetor would even try and run. But, you know, it's probably just a vacuum leak at this point. The EGR is probably torched, we'll just see. But this line is totally melted into stuff and compromised. So that's off, we got it plugged, and we'll just see what happens. And if you wonder why I'm taking such a lackadaisical approach, I just got done driving 800 miles in my F100 a little while ago. So this is, this is, this is Kevin's deal, this is a vacation for me. I'm just here to make jokes. We should not have done this at the end of the day. After, I don't know, you've been doing stuff this weekend. I just drove 800 miles. This is like the fifth revival in a row for me. I'm losing my mind. You need a vacuum cap? Yeah, probably. <laughs> let me just, let me just get this. Ooh, that's wires. Okay, just go back where you came from. Oh, is that the boosty boy? What is this? I just had a hard life back here. You just hit yourself with it. <laughs> uh, you got a bigger cap. You have a big. Like oh, a, like a like yes. I like. I was gonna say like a gopher. I'm like, what? <laughs> I need to go to bed. No, I dropped it. You know. <laughs> this is the last one you get. Don't lose it. <laughs> All right, focus, Luke. Oh, I dropped that one too. <laughs> Let me get him. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! What? I hit my head on the thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna extract you. No, no, no! I didn't get it. Ready? Yep. Oh, my back head. Oh, that was close. Uh, so there's one on top still. I, I actually didn't fix any of them throughout any of that. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, well, I'm going to do this trans line. Well, I'm going to be a ninja. <laughs> it's a carb hat now. So, do you come here often? Oh, gosh. Zing. Oh, there's another big one right here. This whole thing is a giant vacuum tree of fail. 
No, did I drop the other cap? <laughs> God bless it! I need just some no, tape. they're with the everything else. Oh, my gizzard. Oh, jeez. This is... Alright. This is a nightmare. Still better than a Chevy. Stupid EGR garbage. Always in the... Yeah. Why did Ford use all these sizes that are like not normal? Well, these are from China. These, oh. these caps, so... The Ford's probably the correct one. That's probably the case, yes. You're gonna be kind of mad. You know how I always hate our cans of gas and find a way to destroy them? You smashed it? I've smelled gas for a little <laughs> while now. <laughs> dude, look at the mixture screws on the bottom of this car. Oh, right dude, here. they're they're toast. They are absolutely like melted off. Yeah, they're toasted. And this place. thing still runs. It, hopefully the idle, idle was set right before it burned because it's not changing. Whatever yeah. the mixture screws are set at. It'll shear off before we get them to spin. So we plugged off maybe three or four square inches of vacuum leaks by now. I bet this thing runs. How many vacuum caps did I drop? <laughs> like 14. I think I had to buy a new set. <laughs> it was a new set. That's the thing. It'll, it'll probably run amazing and it'll be very frustrating. It is very frustrating. Imagine that! I don't find. If you can actually pull fuel through the carburetor. There's a little valve noise on this side, it sounds like. There's a lot of smoke. Not really. Not the blow idle. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's probably just nice. that for a while. Is oh. that right? That Runs really good. Yeah. Um, I think I might know what happened to the old starter. <laughs> that. So refire it and then I'll unhook this and that won't happen again. Okay. Rest in peace, flywheel. That must be some of the melted wiring feeding back somewhere. It's ba yeah, something's causing Probably a back. As soon as the feed. alternator kicked in or something. Hang on. Hang on. Alright, go for it. <laughs> Hang on. You don't have an accelerator pump. No, it was running, the starter was just still on, so I turned it off. Okay. So when it gets yeah. Wow. Go one more time. It's fried. That's the um that's the bad spot on the flywheel. It just landed on, so we just need to go turn the motor. Try it again. This is strange, I've never run into this before. Look, it's like on fire again. Returning to its roots. <laughs> Uh, hey, did it throw this belt when we first started? No, what? Because it ain't on anything. It must have been like that the whole time. <laughs> did it ever have a belt on the alternator? Maybe it did throw that bolt. Or maybe that bolt is loose. Or that belt. <laughs> Everything's fine. It's okay, guys. Don't, <laughs> don't worry about us. We're professionals. Kevin is having a stroke down there. <laughs> Hey, at least they're not throwing vacuum caps everywhere. One guy's having a seizure, one guy's having a stroke. Four. What the hell are those brackets? What, does it have two retaining yeah. bolts? Well, it's, what? It's a bracket. Onto tied another to a bracket. bracket. What in the Chevy's going on here? I know, it's very Chevrolet, isn't it? Pull it over. It's on. That's good enough. Look at that angle. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> watch this, watch this. Okay. I'm gonna put it on this side of this belt. Yeah, it's it's fine. <laughs> the wrench is straight. <laughs> what could go wrong? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, just tighten that up. It's the one it's the one GM thing, so I don't expect it to work. Oh no, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> the truth came out. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, so if we just put this bracket on this side, it would be fixed. Well, wouldn't hurt it, would it? No, oh, yeah, it'd actually help it. So, somewhere along the way, and I'm not entirely sure if there's a diode in here or something that prevents back feeding through the ignition switch or something to the star solenoid, but it seems like after it runs, um, all of a sudden the star solenoid will come on. And so it's not this guy, the solenoid sticking, um, because it would do it right away. So what I'm just doing is we're bypassing this part of the electrical system. Just using this rusty piece of crap from the back of the truck bed, we're just going to jump her right to the post. 
to the battery here on our solenoid and crank the engine. I think. You got the key on? That sounded horrible. I think we might have actually shredded our everything. I wonder if the gears are just obliterated on the starter. Because it, it ha well, it happened when it was running. I tried to engage the starter when the engine was running. Well, the Bindex is still out. And there's metal flakes everywhere. <laughs> Maybe our uh, $18 starter actually failed. Who could have foreseen Don't this? Don't you say those G words. Give me a hammer. I'm going to whack it. <laughs> the $18 starter is a masterpiece. I just got hit with more poop. That's <laughs> rocks. Hey. <laughs> Dang it. What? I hit the trans line, all the oil fell on me. <laughs> Let it go. Oh, oh no, it's the same. Maybe the teeth are caught half off. Um, well, so actually all starters are specific for the tooth count i'm pretty sure so like if you had like a 157 tooth ford starter and you're trying to spin a 164 tooth flywheel it will do this well, i know because i didn't know that and then i did something like this and this is what it sounded like i but did just grab a random starter out of the garage from a 351 400 modified yeah i don't and i don't know what size this is i would assume it's 164 tooth I don't know if Ford ever used any other variants. The small blocks, it's 157 and 164. I do know it sounded like crap when we were cranking it. It, it, like it did not, yeah, it did not sound right from Sorry. the very beginning. So I wouldn't be surprised if I it's- I think you figured it out. It's not the right McGee. <laughs> I knew about that too. It just completely skipped my mind. I was like, well, a Ford starter is a Ford starter. And here we are taking the starter out again. Eight star <laughs> No, no, no. This is not the eight starter satellite adventure, Morty. Not again. Eight starter adventure, Morty. Oh, no. It's bloody ruined, I think. Oh, I filled it with diesel. Oh, no, I filled it with the wrong starter, Morty. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, All right, I'll take it out. Maybe uh, we can switch the gears between well, the two. Well, how about we do a quick... El Gugolo and see because I doubt they ever they probably only used one flywheel size for the 460 ever and I'm probably wrong the internet's like man you're wrong we're gonna find out because we're gonna google internet so calm down oh dude these trans lines are like rusty McGee so why did I lay in the oil puddle I looked that it was leaking oil and then I rolled under here and was like oh yes right under where the oil is dripping and that's a great place to lay probably have like an oil stain in the shape of a on my back now. It's trans fluid. This is the transmission dipstick. I don't know if you've ever taken a look at it. <laughs> There's rust on it. And, and it's empty. dry. Let's put that back. Oh, that's because it was on fire. Yeah. Ah, that's fine. And, and also has a massive leak down here. So. I'm sure it runs. Or it's moves. a Ford, so it'll run just crappy because it's an automatic. The one mm. thing Ford could never do right was an automatic transmission. I guess that's not as bad as Mopar. They couldn't, well, they didn't do anything right, so. They made really good body lines, but they made them out of cardboard. Uh, oh, God. Is it fried? Dude, the it snapped. <laughs> it's obliterated. The starter broke in half. <laughs> oh, yeah, look what the there's, hell there's a piece in there probably not my $18 starter <laughs> no that was why there was I was like you know there's metal chips in here <laughs> I thought you said metal flake not metal freaking scrap piles no no yeah there's like large metal pieces yeah I'm it's like, well, the entire cap yeah, I see that I think now. there's a lot missing actually yeah well whoops the teeth are fine that exp oh dude it's the whole the whole thing was sitting out here, I think, is what I was seeing. It was just... Yeet. Should have been an IDI starter. Should have taken it to nuclear temperatures and it would have been fine. That's very strange. If you're wondering what I'm referencing, click this card up here. Not my head. There's a thing over here. <laughs> you have rust in your teeth. <laughs> Ew. Oh my god. I'm getting... This trans is dripping on the back of my head. <laughs> you get there's, oil, there's oil in my hair. <laughs> 
why are we so dirty? We've been like we really haven't done anything. We're just, <laughs> we just, starter. We just laughed at vacuum caps for like hours. <laughs> oh, we should probably start trying. I keep saying that, and then we I should don't... probably start her trying. <laughs> I screwed that joke up. I should start her over. Start. <laughs> Maybe you should take a crack at it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I guess we just could have like pretended this worked and just drug it home, but then we really would have been dicks. <laughs> Smack! <laughs> I'm shredding my fingers trying to get it. Even further. One <laughs> end bearing for you. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah, you'll have that because there's no not two bearings. Oh. <laughs> I'm just stupid. <laughs> All right, well that's good. We got everything out. I don't know. This is always tricky because it's you would think if the tooth pitch is different, they probably even have the same number of teeth. One, two, teeth, <laughs> which is seven, two, three. Can I count with my eyes? Eight. Nine. Well, they're both nine. Yeah, they look the one. same. I know, this is so tricky. Let's just take the Bindex off of this one and put it over there. If the Bindex is the problem, which it yeah. looks like it is. This, this one's shredded. This doesn't turn either direction, and this one only turns one. But it, By which I mean it turns one direction, okay. which it should not. Are you saying our $18 starter will live on? In the hearts and minds of this starter, yes. Of a Napa starter, so... I've never looked inside of one of the $18 starters. I've just known them to be utterly reliable and apparently explode. And you wonder why my fingers are all smashed. Luke! <laughs> one time, I blew a starter. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Was there tranny fluid? No. <laughs> Um, I rebuilt a starter one time by hand, which I determined I would never do that again, but here we are. Well, I was like one of those things where when I was in Virginia on that internship and I didn't have anything to do or any friends out there, I torched like my third or fourth starter with long tube headers. This is where my oh. hatred for long tubes started. And then I took these apart like a thousand times, which you'd think I would remember everything, but I don't at this point. I was hoping you could get the Bindex out. Maybe not. Oh, it's so, it's so close. Just let go, thank you. It is just the Bindex that's hashed. I thought the shaft would be screwed, I guess not. Can we just change that and keep this one? I think, all we gotta do is pop this, this clippy off. Ooh, how's this one on here? How did they build this for $18? Like, there's a lot of stuff here. I don't know. I still don't know if the $18 starter is to blame. I might have just had the wrong $18 starter and I am to blame. I like how this one actually has a roller bearing in it. This one, in fact, does not. All right, so there we go. We'll tighten these two bolts down and see if Luke's uh, tailgate starter rebuild is exactly what we needed to combine this Napa starter with the $18 starter of glory. I will say, looking at some of the components we pulled out of this one versus this one. It's a thousand million times better. Yeah, there's no roller bearings in the end where this one has roller bearings. This pin has no retention system where the other one has a head on it. There's, it's just subtle differences. But if you're in a pinch, I've used those and they work. Hurt yourself. Ow, it works. Our new old starter works. All we have to do is make sure it doesn't re-engage at 4,000 RPM. That's why I'm going to do break in half. That's why we're doing this. I think that's actually what killed it. Because it I sounds so. the same. I think so too. So it wasn't our $18 starter's fault. It was our uh, our truck's fault. You got key on? Keys on. Hey, the mosquito fogger's on too. It's idling though, hey. It has no oil pressure sensor. That's totally burned off the back. Does it work? Yeah, it's going up past N. It stopped at N. 
Is oh. it is in is none? It's like the middle. Oh okay. So we have oil pressure. Oh yeah, all the poop went in the engine now. Dude, that thing runs really good for having been on fire. Like no accelerator pump, but damn. Uh, it's it's not bad. Should we try to fix that uh trans line and take her for a rip? I think it needs a lot of trans fluid. It's dumped all the all the trans fluid out at this point. So might as well kill her off and such a medium it's honestly very quiet. Yeah it is. It's two glass packs and one of them is about rotted off. So it's pretty a much straight by small gray era. Uh, no compression. I don't remember, but I wanna say that the four sixties from a specific era actually had a timing chain that was retarded four degrees or six degrees or something from the factory. And one of the cheap mods that people do with these is they just put in a different timing chain that's timed straight up and it's like massive amounts more power. Yeah, because it's bleeding off all of its compression oh, it's by yeah, having late dynamic valve. compression, so potato versus the static. Right, and so case. I don't, someone can answer. I don't know if that's the case because I've only done small blocks. I've heard but, it before too, I just don't know what years they yeah, are. Yeah, I don't know if the Probably. FEs did it too, but I know the 385 series people have, I've read it about these before. How does that run? Look, look at that carburetor and this thing sat here and idled and it's fine. I imagine if you put a real distributor and a real timing chain in this thing, it'd be a rocket ship. Because that honestly just kind of sounds like a 302 or a 351. <laughs> It's pathetic, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? The smogger era, it's like, how do we make 185 horsepower with a 460? Oh yes, all of this crap. Alright, so we're underneath the truck right now, sectioning out the bad piece of transmission line to temporarily put a piece of soft line in to stop that leak so that we can fill this up and see if she'll move around. Everything is a mess. Alright, that'll do it. So we got our crispy stick here pulled out from the fire. She's pretty rusty and uh, doesn't indicate anything on the bottom. So we're going to dump a good fair amount of fluid down into that trans and see if we can change that. How much are you putting in? Oh yeah, I forgot I was supposed to moderate that. <laughs> Enough. A fair amount, how about that? It comes out the dipstick yeah. hole. <laughs> Sprays out. There we go. Okay. Should we uh, see what works? Yeah, what if it's tap? Old mate Cappy, where you at? Where you at, little buddy? Little buddy? It's gone. Well, I guess I'll have to drink this. I think you brought it over with us. <laughs> guess I'll have to drink this. Definitely no other solutions. <laughs> so it doesn't spill, I have to drink it. How about you just put the ignition on and stand here? I'm going to. It's, it idles that good, I'm pretty it, sure. It is literally burnt to a crisp and it will do this okay this Try again. that's still not bad yeah. it's not even shaking that bad oh. that's good because the mixtures are absolutely unadjustable everything's unadjustable but melted so. well should we take it for a little spin Depending when you did that. What do we think? Rain. Wait, 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 Rain. The yeah. front drive. Right? Oh yeah, but it's it's got locking hubs. Yeah, but why weren't we moving? Oh, so it's broken. It must be a 203, a full time. It has a differential in the center, but someone's just put hubs up front. So if I go to high lock, we should be good. Right? No idea. It's wheel drive me. Hey, I did it!
end. Um, it backfired, the throttle stuck, and away we went. <laughs> and it slips out of. Yeah, anytime you put it. Wheel drive thing. You go from reverse to neutral or drive to neutral. Well, anytime you go from neutral to a gear, the transfer case goes dink all the way into neutral. Yeah, I'm sure this is just normal smoke. A lot of big old lean backfire out because hashtag no accelerator pump. Ooh, it smells like fire too. Yeah, look at the throttle's like stuck way over there. Oh yeah, it's nice. Oh, it's like stuck stuck at the moment. I don't, I don't know what's up up there. Oh, you think this? It, Do it, it again. That. Do it again. Uh, I think your choke shit got stuck over here. Now you're, yeah, that's what went on. Weird. There were like no brakes either. Like I was standing on the brakes and we were just like, wee. <laughs> kind of figured it'd be like that. Well, there's that, I suppose. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah, this thing's. This is one of those trucks where we look at it all day. We're like, well, this might not be half bad. And then we drive it for 40 feet and we go, nope. Onward to stuff we have time for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Junkyard Digs. I want to thank Wyatt and Luke for helping out during the episode. Make sure you go subscribe to Luke's channel, Thunderhead289, to see more great content such as this. He's got a lot of great how-to and tech stuff over there. Help teach you guys a bunch of things about carburetors, ignition systems, and engines in general. And I actually try over there. This is for fun. <laughs> I promise I'm more serious. Yeah, this was an absolute last minute. Didn't even know this existed this morning. Here we are. Let's just try it because it's seven, eight miles from home revival. For the hell of it. What are you doing? No. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy this. We will see you next time here on Junkyard Digs. Like I said, make sure you subscribe to all my friends, Thunderhead289. Still in the cool classics, Mustangs 429, Vice Grip Garage, DeBosch Garage, Cars and Cameras, and Junkyard Move. We'll see you next time. Peace. Bye. Honestly, from this angle, it looks like it's already participated in the first heat of a demolition derby. <laughs> Maybe the second heat as well. Dude, this needs to go into a tough truck competition. Oh god, it'd be good at that, actually. It would take one turn and the body would fall off. Yes, sir.